Hello and welcome. Well, today we're going to be talking about, are you tired of waiting? We've been going through a lot of waiting, it seems like, over this last year, and now into this year, and it seems like more waiting. Well, waiting is difficult, and I think it's one of the most difficult things to do because it feels like you don't have control. It's like you want to do something so you can move forward and be busy and everything can go back to normal or you can get on with whatever it is you want to get on with. It feels like a waste of time. Have you ever thought that? Waiting just seems so inactive, passive. It's a waste of time. But is it? Or is it that waiting brings a boundary around us? We're not comfortable with boundaries. But in that boundary, we have the opportunity to look forward with anticipation, like a child waiting for Christmas or their birthday. And you just watch the anticipation and they're so excited and and they're longing for that moment when they get their presence and their excitement builds and builds and builds and they anticipate, they have hope. And so it's an active time. It's frustrating at times for them, but then the moment comes and they rip into their packages and they find the treasures that have been given to them. So waiting feels like a liability. It feels like canceling things, but it's not because waiting positions us for celebration, for hope. Well, I'm Barbara Hitching, and this is Transformative Tuesday. And this is another wonderful opportunity just to touch and taste and see that the Lord, He is good. Everything He does has a purpose and a plan, even when it doesn't feel like it. So where are you from? Are you in a cold climate or a warm? We're bouncing back and forth here, one day hot, the next day cold, and then in between. Right now we're in between. It's a little cold. Have you subscribed to my YouTube? I have a YouTube, and I would so love for you to subscribe to it. So if you need the link, just message me, and I will send it to you. So today we're talking about, are you tired of waiting? And so I want to ask some questions. Do you find it difficult to wait? Some people don't seem to find it difficult. I do. How about you? And have you ever been in the position where you were waiting, desperately praying, longing, and agonizing and looking forward, but nothing was happening and you felt discouraged. Have you ever experienced that? But what happens when God answers your prayer? Have you ever had that happen when you've been waiting and waiting and then out of the blue, God answers? What emotions did you feel? What did you do? How did it impact your life? I'd love for you to share below. Was it worth waiting when you received what you had been longing for? Was it worth the wait? And in the process, did you learn something fresh about the Lord? I know for myself, Waiting is difficult, but as I wait, I grow, and that's always exciting. And it reminds me of a verse in Ecclesiastes 3, and it says, The Lord has made everything beautiful in His time. 
He has also set eternity in our heart. God has an appointed time. He has times and seasons, a purpose for everything under heaven. So when you're waiting, the Lord is involved and he's waiting with you. Did you ever think about that? You're not waiting alone. And it's not just a passive nihilistic kind of thing because the Lord is there with you. And as he waits with you, something incredible happens. The Holy Spirit is free to do a deep work in your heart. And as he works, his goal is to conform you to the image of Christ. So one of the things I've, I've been thinking about as I've think, been thinking about God's appointed times is Adam and Eve. Now, this time of the year, the beginning of every year, I go back to Genesis. And many times through the year, I go back to Genesis, especially to the creation story. There's so much to learn. And God says to Adam and Eve, don't eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Specifically, he said that to Adam, and Adam told Eve. And so he was putting a boundary. He was saying, wait. And what I've learned is that when God asks me to wait, wherever he places a boundary, Satan always comes to tempt, to try to break that boundary and to try to violate that waiting time. Because if you don't wait, God can't bring you to this beautiful appointed time where he's going to bless you. And so as I was thinking, it made me re think of, of Satan as an angler, a master angler. If you're a fisherman, you will understand. And he has a fly rod and he's really good with flicking his wrists. I've never learned that. But the ones that are really good have a flick of the wrist and they just make the fly and the fly line do whatever they want it to do. Now, at the end of the fly line, they put these beautiful handcrafted lures. And Satan is like that. He flicks a thought, a word, a feeling into your brain, but it's linked to a fly rod. And as he flips it back and forth, it's enticing. And just like the fish is enticed to jump on that bait, we are tempted to latch a hold of that thought that imagination, that feeling, because it feels so exciting, so enticing. And it always comes in times when we are to be quiet and wait. And so there's Satan working as an angler. If you bite on the bait, he lets you then move away and begin to run. And again, with a flick of the wrist, he is able to get that hook that is hidden in the bait to hook into you. And you don't realize it, but you are now attached to the fly line, which is attached to the rod that is in the hand of the master angler. What happens then? Well, you have those times of exhilaration as you run and you experience and you taste and you touch and you take what you were longing for. And like the fish swimming happily away, the time comes when the angler begins to gently, gently reel it in. Did you know Satan is very patient? He also has appointed times for you, appointed times to steal, to kill, and to destroy, to 
undermine and take from you everything the Lord is offering you. And so his goal is to break that boundary so you don't wait, but you reach out and take. That's exactly what happened with Eve there in the garden, that Satan came with a great masquerade, wearing a mask. She had no idea it was Satan. She thought it was a snake. And she interacted with the snake. And Satan got her to think his thoughts and doubt God. God said, no, wait, don't do this. But Eve didn't stop to think because her emotions, well, her feelings were aroused. She could smell the fruit. It smelled delicious. And then when she touched it, she didn't die. And so she knew Satan had to be telling the truth. The snake had to be telling the truth. And so instead of trusting her creator, the one that made her, the one that made the tree to whom the tree belonged, she trusted the serpent. And she reached out and she took. Now her sin wasn't eating the fruit. Her sin really was stealing from God. God said, don't eat the fruit. The fruit belonged to him. He had the right, he had the authority to place a boundary around the tree because it was his tree. So when she took the fruit, because she was deceived, she ate and she gave it to Adam and he ate. In that moment, they stole from God. They were thieves. They refused to wait. They refused to trust the Lord. They trusted Satan and they leaned on their own understanding. You see, when, when the enemy comes to entice you, it feels good. It feels right. It looks like it's really logical. The fruit was good to eat. Satan didn't lie about that. It tasted good. But he lied about God. And so when the enemy comes to you, he takes a bit of the truth, and he wraps it in a lie, just like the lure, the beautiful handcrafted lure that is wrapped around a very sharp hook. The goal is to deceive you and take you captive. And once you are captive, then the enemy makes you his slave. Well, there's always consequences. And Adam and Eve experienced consequences for not waiting. They experienced shame. They experienced missing out on the gift God wanted to give them. You see, if they had waited in God's appointed time, he would have taken the fruit and given it to them with a blessing. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into my joy. And he would have given them the fruit. They missed God's appointed time. And as a result, the next consequence was they experienced the enemy's appointed time, which brought God's appointed time where he said, the soul that sins must die. Now, Adam and Eve didn't immediately physically die. There was a period of time where they lived many years, but they experienced spiritual death so that the intimacy they had with the Lord was shut down. And they no longer shared the joy of the Lord that they had once experienced. 
And so they missed out on God's wonderful gifting of his appointed time that leads to celebration. And they were exiled from the garden and they came under the curse. And again, that curse brought God's appointed time where it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. It makes me think of Psalms 27. David was really good at waiting. He waited many years. He had times when he didn't wait and he suffered the consequence because of it. But other times he waited. And because he waited, he was able to say things like this. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Now we've talked about how it feels like waiting is inactive. Did you know that the root of wait, what it really means, is to look with expectation, to hope. So in other words, we could say, hope for the Lord, be strong, let your heart take courage, hope in the Lord, like the child that is hoping and anticipating the wonderful gifts he's going to receive. Hope in the Lord. So when you're in a waiting time, there are wonderful lessons to learn. And I really would like to give you a, a call to action. And in my call, this is what I'd like you to do. I'd like you today to think of a peaceful place, a place where you like to go and you can spend five minutes there just being quiet and waiting in the Lord's presence waiting in his presence with expectation that he is going to commune with you. And I want you to do that every day for a week. Did you know if you develop the habit of waiting, when temptation comes, it will be easier to wait on the Lord because you've learned in times just of normal life to wait. You need to train your brain to wait because we do not naturally wait. We're like little children that want to bulldoze and sneak in and take what we want and take it now. So my, my call to action is make the decision to spend five minutes. It's not much only five minutes and wait. And then when you get a strong urge in the course of your day, maybe it's for that second piece of pie. Maybe it's for sleep, laying in and not getting up when the alarm clock rings. Maybe it's to open your mouth and say an unkind word. I want you to resist that urge Take a deep breath. Just pause and breathe. And then ask Jesus permission. Is it okay for me to take this second piece? Is it okay for me to speak these words? And listen to what he says. If he says no, wait. Wait. You may be so excited tomorrow when that piece of pie is still there. And you can just sit down in a quiet moment and enjoy that pie. Whereas if you took two pieces right now, your stomach would hurt and you would be too full and you wouldn't have enjoyed that second piece. Waiting is something we learn. And we learn as we make the decision that out of the waiting, something good is going to happen. And so pause, breathe, and ask the Lord, 
is this your will? And if he says no, ask him to help you resist that urge and to wait. Wait on the Lord, remembering to reach out and take for yourself what you want is like taking the bait of the enemy. There will be a hook in it, and it will cause you harm. So it's important to wait for God's appointed times, because when he gives you a gift, it's just sweet. And there's nothing defiling. There's no shame. There's no pain. There's joy and celebration in his presence. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you call us to wait. It's really hard to wait. We don't like to wait, but in the waiting, you stretch us. And that makes us stronger in our inner man. And in waiting, we learn discipline. We learn hope in you. Rather than placing our hope, our confidence in a piece of fruit or a piece of pie or getting our own way, being in control, we learn to place our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that always results in intimacy with yourself. So, Father, we thank you for that. We ask in Jesus' name that you give us courage to wait in the difficult place where we are right now. Help us not be afraid, not seek to take control, but to hope in you, to wait on you, that you might encourage our hearts. Do not fear, for I am with you, says the Lord. Do not anxiously look about you seeking how to be in control, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then the verse that many of us love in Isaiah 40. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become tired or weary. He wants to bless you with his special appointed season. His understanding is inscrutable. And he blesses you as you wait on him by giving you strength. He gives strength to the weary. And to who, him who lacks might, he increases power. Though the youths grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble and fall as you wait on the Lord, trusting him, hoping in him, setting your affection on him, you will gain new strength. You will mount up with wings as eagles, you will run and not get tired. You will walk and not become weary. The Lord wants to bless you today with a treasure. And the greatest treasure in his appointed time is himself. Allow him to bless you. Don't reach out and take the fruit for yourself. Wait until he gives you the fruit, because then you are going to experience the blessings of the Lord that bring no defilement. 
So the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine on you and give you peace. Amen. See you next week. God bless you. Love you. Bye.